when the president met with us and other political parties, we told him clearly that before contemplating first subsidy removal, if at all there is a subsidy, the existing refineries must be made to work while new ones must be built. That is the statement of Alaji Lai Mohammed made on Monday, the second day of January 2012. So what this government is telling us now about deregulation was what the then PDB government told us. So I say deregulation, old news. It was Fela Nicola Pokuti that sang that song. If I sing, he say, what I know they, now old news see be that. If them say they don't deregulate, now old news be that. In 2012, when the PDP administration of Good Luck Jonathan increased the fuel pump price from 65 Naira to 141 Naira, as we all know then, the subsequent labor strike and protest by Nigerians, especially those in government today, alleging all kinds of insecurity, sincerity on the part of government, forced the then administration to reduce the price on January 17, 2012 to 97 Naira per liter. And on February 2015, it dropped further to 87 Naira, and the APC claimed then that it was gimmick to win vote, as according to them, there was no subsidy but fraud. However, President Muhammadu Buhari, who claimed in 2012 that there was nothing like subsidy, became president on May 2015, and a few weeks to his first anniversary in office, precisely on Wednesday, the 11th day of May 2016, increased the pump price from 87 naira to 141 naira per litre, claiming removal of subsidy. The Nigerian Labour Congress, the organized civil society that had been seriously compromised by the ruling party, attempted a protest that failed even before it started. The PDP, which is now the main opposition party, while waiting for Pastor Tude Bakari, Professor Wale Shoinka, President Buhari and others who protested, protested in 2012 to protest on their behalf, only voiced its opposition to the harsh, obnoxious and unwarranted increase through press releases and nothingness. Maybe they are still learning how to play opposition. I hope it doesn't take them 60 years to learn. Hmm. The then Minister for State for Petroleum, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, while addressing stakeholders on the inevitability of the increase in fuel prices, said that government had taken their hands off the fixing of the prices and that independent marketers were free to source for scarce forests from anywhere and import the product. But since then, NMPC had been the sole importer of the product. No forest anywhere. In March 2020, the price reduced from 145 to about 125 naira per litre, but quickly moved up again to between 140 to 143 per litre in July 2020. However, on the 2nd of September 2020, citing the same reasons given by the then Minister for State for Petroleum, the current Minister for State for Petroleum, Timmy Preciva, announced yet another increase from 143 to 155 per litre. The same lines they have been using on us since 1999 were the same lines that the current minister used till date, telling us deregulation. And that's why I say, like fella, now old news be that. It's either they think we don't have brains to think or remember, or they know that we remember, but they just don't care what we think. Remember, PDP, the youth, labor, and even organized civil society are still waiting for people that protested in 2012 to lead them on pro or protest on their behalf. I beg second base, Jerry. In September 2019, when the price of crude oil was $67 a barrel, Nigerians paid 148 naira per litre. But however, in September 2020, when the price dropped to $43 per barrel, we are asked to pay 155 Naira per liter. I see they try to do the mathematics. Well, somebody said, na dollar flock fluctuation. So we are going to be at the mercy of foreign currency fluctuation. So what then is the essence of government? And like someone asks, if you have deregulated, how come you are still paying bridging costs? I will therefore advocate, being in critical times when a lot of Nigerians are losing their jobs and the world is recovering from a global pandemic and countries are giving bailout and tax rebate to a citizen, to cushion the hardship of the pandemic, it would be grossly irresponsible for any government to contemplate a price hike of a mono commodity that drives our economy without the same government first cutting down heavily on their expenses, 
cost of governance and ensuring the provision of local refineries to at least refine the one consumed locally, considering also the attendant consequence of the additional electricity hike, even though most of our bills are estimated. And like Alajilai Mohammed said in 2012, it is only after this that government can truly show how to lead by example and convince people of the genuineness of their recent step. Otherwise, anytime they want to add a tax to petroleum, they will call it deregulation until the price hits 500 naira a liter. I hope we as a people wake up from our slumber before then. If you do your own and I do my own, Nigeria will survive. <laughs> ah, which way, Nigeria? That's which that's way to go? <laughs> which way to go? I, I love, love my fatherland. Oh, yes. I, I want to know. I want to know. Which way, Nigeria, is he's heading, heading to? Truly. Well, we have uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit conflicted. Um, and that's, that's because I, I spent uh, some of my career in the oil and gas sector. Um, but I can I can say tax. Yes. tax. So I can I can say a bit of, of some things that are fact. Number one, subsidy is real, and um, it is bad for our economy. Number two, it is not a political matter. So it should not be a GEJ, PMB, APC, PDP. Because if you look at it, in 2012, PDP says it was good to go. APC says no is a bad thing. Today, it is the exact reverse. The APC that said it was bad then, uh, the one that wants to do it, and the PDP are now saying, no, it is bad. So if we don't take that political side of things off the table, we won't even be able to address what the matter is. In 2004, OBJ removed subsidy. By 2006 or late 2005, we were fully back in that same subsidy. In 2012, GEJ attempted it. We also lost it. Now it has been tried again. In my opinion, number one, we have not communicated about this matter of subsidy properly. Number two, the government that is asking people to come and make sacrifice, what has it put on the table? The jumbo salaries are yeah. there. The wastages all over yeah. the old place are there. And you ask the same people who are making the same sacrifice to come and make further sacrifice. It is improper. Yeah. In, in, in the United States, 1% of the top earners in the United States pay 39% or 40% yeah, of, the of the entire taxation. Yeah. 1%. Yeah. So here, we want to tax the, the, the lower rung of the ladder till they are, they are dead and the people cannot be seen with sacrifice on the table. That's the problem. Okay, let's take Nafisa's. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, to be honest, I, 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 I agree with Mr. Bolahon. What has the government put on the table? It's, they can no longer afford subsidy, but they can afford to have a government that is run a government that is expensive. You're not cut down on the salaries. The jets, as the presidential jets, are still pulling the hangar. Today, you're here now. One governor is buying how many jeeps and cars that are not even from Nigeria, not even innocent for their legislators, and they are basically just spreading the fat among the elite class, among the upper class, and they are strangulating the middle class until they are nothing but, you know, gone. You cannot, it, it, to be honest, government is for the people. They were not established for themselves. They were established because of us, because of the nation, to create laws and policies that make our lives better. It's a social contract. And if they cannot honor it, then they need to be booted out. Because you cannot insist you're increasing the price of oil, electricity is going up, inflation is going up by double digits, everything is going up, our income is still the same, and you do not want to cut down on the expenses of your government. I don't know why it costs one billion for a <laughs> for Asso Rock to be buying food in an entire year. What what how does that make sense? And then you have people that are suffering, people are not going to school, people are dying because they are suffering out of hunger. You know, it makes no sense. It really makes no sense. If you're going to insist that we put more on the table, then you definitely have to put more on the table. You yeah. don't educate people properly about subsidy. You just yank it up, and then you're squeezing everything out of the middle class through taxes, and then you still, you still, you somehow can rationalize this decision. It doesn't just make sense, no matter how you want to look at it. Yeah. 
There you go. For me, it's about the cost of governance. I think uh, Balan touched on that and mm -hmm. Nafisat also. You cannot be asking people to make sacrifices. And daily, we're making sacrifice from a, sacrifices from a fixed income. But you're there making no sac sacrifice in at all. You tell us, show us. You know, it's a mm -hmm. we versus them. Mm -hmm. On our show us on our own sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That one we want Put it to on the table. Show us what you are sacrificing. But like they say, here... Yeah. Time flies faster. The end always seems to come too soon on the advocate. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV, hashtag the advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, simply go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate NG. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.